Hi folks, welcome back to the Decoy Shed. We're visiting with Pat Gregory again about a project that he first mentioned to me in uh, St. Charles at the Decoy Show. Pat, why don't you share with the audience what we talked about? Sure, Tim, thanks. So, um, I, uh, being a carver, being a duck hunter, I have a hard time, uh, difficult time, uh, seeing old decoys sit. Um, I like to, I like to see decoys in the water. I like to see them being used. You know, I'm, a, I'm just a big believer in redemption. And so this whole idea of decoy redemption came into my head, right? You know, I just, um, it, it just really bugs me to see old decoys not get used. And so I've done a little bit over the years. You know, I've restored a couple of my great granddads. I take them out and hunt with me. But uh, this year at the St. Charles show, uh, a friend of mine, a, a Michigan carving friend of mine, Dave Robinson came up to me and shared that he had five decoys that he picked up at a garage sale from a known Michigan carver, Jim Wicks. And uh, I was familiar with Jim, um, uh, first uh, uh, in the North American decoys uh, winter in 1976, they ran a, uh, an article on Jim and I got very interested in his decoys. He made a classic Michigan decoy, you know, good uh, gunning block, um, good flat bottom, a good head on it. And so I became interested in Jim and his decoys. When Dave brought these decoys to St. Charles, they were actually Jim Wick's decoys out of his rig, okay? Uh, the story with them was, is, is he bought 10 of them. Dave brought five to the show. Uh, these decoys were wooden heads uh, carved by Jim, but Jim got into molding some composite bodies, okay? Um, back in the late 60s, early 70s, these guys, they were duck hunters. They were ingenious, right? They were looking for ways to constantly better their rig. So they started molding their bodies, and, and those bodies uh, were something like this. They were detailed, but they were very lightweight. They'd put a wooden head on them and, and uh, a good molded body. Uh, Jim always used to swing weight on the bottom, and, and they'd hunt with them. So, so Dave brings five bluebills to the show, two sleepers, three upright heads. And, uh, but they were beat up pretty good. They would have been difficult to hunt in the condition they were in, but being the Michigan collector that I am, I liked to, I wanted to see those decoys get back in the game. What's your plan for these birds? Well, uh, much like a tool, a tool is useless if it's not usable, if it's not sharp, if it's not, um, uh, you know, usable. So, so my plan is is to to spruce these decoys up, to to redeem these decoys to the point to where they can be used again. So, so um, any uh, I needed to replace a bill on the drake. The end of the bill was sheared off. Had to replace that. The tails needed repaired. Some of the glue work needed to be uh, repaired. And so my plan was to do all those small um, uh, fixes on the decoys. Um, base coat them, and then uh, repaint them uh, in the style that Jim would have done, and then go ahead and, and hunt them. And so so this fall, we're going to take them out, hunt them, and kill blue, bluebills over them. And, and I would say this, I mean, I want to I wanna honor Mr. Wicks. You know, he, he contributed to the history of our decoy making, and he was a great uh, decoy carver. And, um, uh, you know, I would uh, think that it would honor him greatly if he knew that we, these decoys were restored and, and, and we got them back in the game. And, and wouldn't it be awesome if we went out and killed bluebills over these decoys? Okay, Pat, we've talked about the why and the who. Tell us what, what we're going to be doing today. Sure, Tim. So after I acquired these decoys um, and, and, and really kind of uh, came to the notion that I wanted to redeem them and, and rehab them, I had to do kind of a visual inspection of each decoy to really kind of contemplate what, you know, needed to be repaired. Because honestly, um, I, I want to balance my repairs. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to make them bring them back to perfect because these decoys are probably, you know, 50 years old. Uh, so, so I want them to show their age. So um, for these two hands, these the upright heads, the tails, um, were separated. Okay, so this is a this is a resin body. This is a, a kind of a, a composite body. It's a wooden head and a wooden tail. Well, they, these tails on both of these hands 
have come apart and, and need to be re-glued. So, so what I'm going to do with these hens, um, these wooden tails, the glue seam has separated. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take some, some glue and I'm going to finger it, really work it down in the, those seams and try to reestablish those glue seams. Uh, the, the tail is still in there good and solid, uh, so it's secure. It's just to, to not take on water in there, I want to take some Type Bond 3, which is waterproof, and I want to work some glue down around that seam and just really get that whole trough filled in there good and solid. What about the sleepers? What are you going to do to those? Sure. Well, this, um, out of the five decoys, two of them are sleepers like this. Again, a wooden head, composite body. Um, this was actually in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got a few um, marks on it that were natural wear. The tail uh, has a spot out of it. I'm probably going to work with that and uh, do a little rehab on that. This one, the tail was um, actually broken, so I'm going to putty, I'm going to put some putty on this. Let that harden and take that down. And then uh, I guess here's, a, here's one of the artist privileges that I want to take. Um, you know, hey, it's debatable whether sleepers need eyes or not. Well, I guess I'm the artist. I'm the decoy maker here. I want to put some eyes in them. And so I'm actually going to drill some holes, put some eyes in them. So um, I'm going to take that liberty. And uh, uh, the other liberty I'm going to take is both of these were hens. I'm actually going to paint one a hen and one a drake. Uh, because out of the five I've got, four of them are hens and only one's a drake. So I'd like to have a sleeper hen, a sleeper drake, and then I'll have the two upright head hens and then I'll have a drake. So I'll have two drakes and three hens. So one uh, one drake and one hen. So I'm going to take, uh, I've got a drill bit, uh, bit on my Dremel. I'm going to go ahead and mark these eyes, drill a hole in there, and uh, put some yellow eyes in there with some uh, Elmer's putty. Um, Putty these eyes up and, and, and get the eyes in there so they can be drying. I'm just going to mark these first. Now this is the glass eye underneath there. Oh boy.
So this drake had the most uh, structural damage. Uh, you can see the bill got sheared off, okay? And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and repair that. Um, it looks to be cedar to me. I did, um, I did take a knife and just kind of flatten that out uh, good to where I've got a nice flat surface. And I'm going to take some two-part epoxy and I'm going to glue some new uh, cedar on it. And I'm going to go ahead and reshape this bill uh, using, using the hens as a model. I'm going to go ahead and recarve that bill to where it'll be restored and then uh, he'll have a bill back on him. But this is going to probably be the most uh, structural uh, rehab that I'm going to need to do is, is the bill on that drake. Other than that, pretty simple repair. So um, structurally this drake, uh, the bill was severed, it, it sheared, and it uh, uh, looks like cedar. So I've got some white cedar here. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on there with a good two-part epoxy. After I'm going to cut it out first, and then I'm going to glue it on there with a good two-part epoxy and let that um, dry and harden so then I can come back and um, and, and uh, carve it. And I'm using these hens as a template. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of um, I want to make sure that I'm at least pretty accurate to what uh, Mr. Wicks did. So I'm going to kind of trace this. Uh, so I can get my width of the bill and then I'll put that on the bandsaw and cut it out. Okay, so I've got uh, repairing this bill. I got my uh, cedar cut out. I'm gonna attach it to the end of this bill. I'm using a good uh, five minute two uh, two part epoxy. It's good hard glue. It'll dry quick. So uh, I'm just mixing the the uh, hardener and the epoxy uh, together, so I can go ahead and glue this and and attach it to this drake, and then I'll let that dry and then uh, carve it here in a few minutes. So just mixing the epoxy. So once I got it all mixed, I'm going to take it and apply it to this bill, to the uh, cedar here. Just get a generous amount on there. Spread it around. This is a really good hard glue that will allow me to uh, carve this here in a few minutes. Don't have to wait overnight or just really dries fast and dries hard. Okay, so I got the glue on. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach it and just hold it on here. Okay, so the glue set up on uh, this two part epoxy dry, and uh, so I can start to carve away some of this extra wood. I'll just uh, take my carving knife and get, get on this cedar and just start to remove. <laughs> some of this excess wood, just about like that. Just kind of taking my time. Just shaping this. I think I'm going to use a little power here. Get in here, do a little smoothing.
and that's just a Dremel with a sanding seal on it. What you're using is just a Dremel. That's it. It's a Dremel with a drum on it. Yeah. Okay. That's all. And this is just really to shore this up. This was uh, split on a real tough angle. So I'm just really using this to size this bill up to where it matches. But yeah, just a drum with a sanding drum. Gonna take a sanding block to it and just start to do a little easy rounding. Just trying to really feather that bill into that extra piece of wood. So I had to make up the end of that bill. Still a little bit long, but like I said, see Jim carved a nail in the end there, and I want to leave enough for that nail. So I'm still about, oh, maybe a quarter inch long there. Maybe I'll take off a little bit more. So I'm just cleaning this up with a little sandpaper. Really had a whole bunch of wood I put on here just to get this little tip on the end, but Sometimes that's what it takes. I'd rather have it too long and work it down. It's easier to take wood off than it is to add it, of course. So I'm just kind of smoothing it. Like I said, this was a tough angle to fix because the way this was sheared. But it is what it is. You know, sometimes when you get um, damaged decoys or broken decoys, um, that's what you're going to get to deal with is fixing a, a shear like that that it's just a bad angle. So just drawing the nail on there. Jim had quite a sizable nail on the end of that. And I'm just gonna take my take my knife and make a little stop cut here. I'm just kinda Breaking that wood there, another one on this side, and that's just kind of making a little cut that I can carve up to that and just kind of clean that out. So I'm just kind of coming back and cleaning right up to that stop cut. That's where I'll slow down and take my time. Just kind of break it down a little bit so it doesn't look too perfect. You know, you keep in mind a lot of these bills, you know, that's where they achieve or, or they attain a lot of the wear over the years is on the bill. And so I don't want this thing to be too new or nice looking. I want it to be a little bit worn down, maybe a little bit dented, you know, so it kind of fits the age of the decoy. But essentially that's what we're looking at. You know, put a little nail on there, added this piece back in there. And it, it, it really kind of restored restored the bill of what of what Jim had on there.